about two years ago, my wife Becky and I wanted to do something good to Milwaukee. We wanted to give back something to Milwaukee. We looked at this house. This house needed a lot of love and care. This house is listed in the National Historical Registry. And this house is a pride of Milwaukee. We thought it would be fun to restore the house, bring it back to old grandeur. We were able to assemble a great craftsman and artist to work on this house. We paid attention to every detail so we could save the architectural integrity of the house and adding uh, modern amenities to this house. I hope you'll enjoy this tape showing the great amount of work went into this house. Please come and visit us. Perhaps it was this blinding introduction to the historical Eli Mansion which allowed Dr. Kylas and Becky Rao to look beyond the aged house, its drafty windows and stained limestone. They were determined to bring it back to its grandness, to be their home. It became a passion. Teams of artists and craftspeople, not only chosen for their skills, but also for their historical lexicon, were enlisted to renew the international collection of styles employed by the architects. The finest artisans brought back the details of this impressive foyer, stripping and refinishing the rich details of fine wood carving, grinding and polishing the exotic stones, cleaning the walls and mantel until the rich tones were revealed. The graceful curves of the grand staircase again work in harmony with the masterful work of the ornamental iron fabricator, Austrian-born Cyril Kolnick. His trademarks, blooming buds, flowing acanthus leaves, and delicate ribbons of iron, flow with all the delicate fabrics and textures. An elegant setting for Claudia Eline's Sunday afternoon concerts and sing-alongs. The architects, Kirchhoff and Rose, designers of the Schlitz Palm Gardens and other Eline family projects, were a natural choice for Herman and Claudia Eline. The house was executed between 1917 and 1919, and was so stunning at the time, it was made the subject of a four-page picture story in Town Topics magazine in New York City. John Schlegenhaft and Greg Pardot who had previously collaborated on similar projects of this scale, proposed for the Rouse answers to their dreams of refurbishing the mansion. Establishing a project headquarters right on the site, they began contracting the artisans and tradespeople that would lovingly update and restore this grand old home. Electrical systems were replaced, while missing fixtures were painstakingly reproduced in the same style of the period. New heating and cooling systems were installed, and modern conveniences blended into the existing framework as inconspicuously as possible. From their headquarters, research was conducted, decorative elements were introduced, designs drawn and approved, birthdays celebrated, spreadsheets adjusted, all moving towards one goal, to create the personality of the home. In the living room, the French inspiration is obvious in plaster mouldings and gilded embellishments. 
16 coats of paint and whitewash had to be removed, however, before the Conrad Schmidt Studios could gild the decorations created by the Orlandini craftsmen. Five types of gilding were employed to give the motifs dimension. The carpet, handcrafted from a Louis XV pattern, enhances the decorative uses of floral patterns in the decorative plaster panels and overmantel. This is the garden room, which is overlooking Lake Michigan. Uh, I immediately saw the opportunity to exploit the rich references to India, its native fauna, as well as Kylas and Becky's favorite flowers. To the original imagery, I've added peacocks, hibiscus, and their bright palettes, so reminiscent of India. The murals, which were originally installed in this house, were absolutely not repairable, being water damaged and darkened with age. Being very familiar with the artistic achievements of two California artists, I began tempting the rows with the challenge of reclothing the solarium walls with scenes of the Taj Mahal and exotic animals indigenous to India. Mrs. Rao described for the internationally famed muralists a day at India a polo match where she was surrounded by blue banners and awnings furling in the wind. She now delights in the exact moment as they have captured it. Dr. Rao came to the United States from India in 1967, met his wife Becky at the Sam Houston State University of Texas, and eventually settled in Whitefish Bay, Wisconsin. Their devotion to the computer business, which they established, repaid them with the good fortune to purchase this estate. The dining room displays the ingenuity of nearly all of the teams working on the project. When purchased by the Rows, all that was left of the original dining room was the ornamental plaster ceiling. Research proved that the original paneling and mantelpieces had been removed. Using old photographs, blueprints and drawings discovered in the Wisconsin Architectural Archives, it was determined that a replication was going to be difficult but possible. Flitches, samples of trees to be selected for paneling, were presented to the Rouse by Bob Erdman. To get the panels to all have a uniform book-matched pattern and graining, the whole tree was purchased. Don Soderberg's crew used the poultice technique so successful in stripping the living room to prepare the dining room ceiling. Carpenters cut and fit the hundreds of feet of walnut to exacting specifications. While stonemasons and sculptors recarved a limestone mantle, Steve Balish applied the combination of painting techniques, which allow the ceiling's oak leaves, acorns, and birds to be distinguished in a soft antique treatment, while the cameo they encircle is high gloss, reflecting a carpet that mimics the ceiling. This room, Mrs. Rao's favorite as the project progressed, was adapted from the banquet room of Ford Abbey in Dorchester, England. The 17th century architect, Inigo Jones, designed the original which was the inspiration for Mrs. Eli's request. The butler pantry served the demands of entertaining so well that some of the original arrangement of cabinets was retained. We were, we were fortunate to have Lachman, Kylas' brother, here for the whole two years still photography and video uh, archiving about all of the changes that were going on in the whole two years. Uh, when we began designing changes to this end of the house, I was sorry to see the quaint refrigeration system and the curiously impractical stacks of linen drawers removed, but the function of what was once an area confined to use by the employees and children had to relinquish its institutional character. The warmth of maple woodwork with bird's eye maple patterning, patterning, the repetitive use of the arch established by the original windows and the inconspicuous use of appliances camouflaged by matching maple panels orchestrates this place into one flowing functional family area. It's difficult to believe that the twisted columns are not of Brazilian Bahia granite matching the countertops but are actually full painted. A French Hautefort limestone floor was installed in a pattern which, like the exterior brick, plays off the foyer floor. 
noteworthy is the natural addition of the dining terrace that overlooks the garden and Lake Michigan. Built of the same limestone and following the exact requirements used on the other two terraces, this masonry looks original to the building. The charm of the dome ceiling here is now fun to sit beneath for guests familiar with the family pets immortalized in the hunting scenes. The library has shed its dark mood with the lit cabinets added to accommodate our gun collection. Visitors are unable to determine which of the wood panels here have been reproduced, which are original, and which hide the concealed tobacco humidity. The small rooms in the north wing of the second level become a collection of jewel boxes. Brightly colored fantasy imagery on the pedestal lavatories exotic tactile textures compete respectfully for a view of Lake Michigan. The main rooms in the center connect three bedrooms in an appropriately stately style. The bathroom here invites guests to accommodate their needs with lapis lazuli tile surfaces and gold fixtures. The configuration of rooms each connected by a door to the next inner row without a hallway, allowed the E-Line children to find their way at night safely from one room to another. Looking back through these private spaces, one is freshly impressed by the sophisticated way color, material, pattern and furnishings complement each other in a rhythm of golds, blue and woody browns. From the plaid taffeta wall panels, to the Biedermeyer furniture designed for this house. The media room will be a family gathering room for the second level, housing a home entertainment center, small bar, and bathroom. It will also be one of the best places to view the horizon across the lake. There are 175 windows in the house, all of which were replaced with Verhalen Company's energy efficient windows by Pella. This difficult task was magnified by the decision to make them look like the originals, but have the advantages of energy efficiency, thus challenging historic landmark status. The landmark status of the home, however, is preserved in the plaque at the entrance of the building, awarded in 1984. Later, it was granted protection under a conservation easement. This large window, of course, was the most challenging to be fitted. Electrical updating was essential to provide the conic sconces and Baccarat crystal chandelier. The artists who created the ceiling mural so successfully have expressed sentiments of introducing its theme in their own home. Apollo, from his sun-drawn chariot, expels protagonists of evil. Why these allegorical human bodies fall from heaven, classical muses pose and repose around the perimeter of the sky. The bright colors foiled by pastel illusions flow naturally into the south wing of the home, where a master bath, boudoir, and master bedroom complete a suite of rooms exclusively for Dr. and Mrs. Rao. Rose Quartz, reputedly known for its aura of peace, ties the bath together through elements in the floor, fabric, and the fixtures. Mirrors and crystal light sconces complement the reflective quality of polished Calcutta marble, lacquered surfaces, and porcelain. The fringe added to the curtains in this room humors the collage of textures perfectly. John Schlagenhaft was able to create a historical statement in the master bedroom as important for its inspiration as its posterity. The original plaster decoration on the walls was reintroduced through the design in the custom-made rug. Fabric panels lining the walls display the same material used by the British Princess of Wales, Diana, in her wedding dress. The fabric in the draperies is a reproduction of that in Marie Antoinette's boudoir in the Palace of Versailles, attained only through the permission of the French government and only reproduced twice since its original creation. 
The faux painted rose quartz insets in the pilasters coordinate the artistic accomplishment of this room. The boudoir utilizes mirrored doors to conceal a vanity which continues the theme of rose quartz, as well as other dresser furnishings. The lower level of the mansion has been renovated 100%. The powder room here now invites guests with brightly colored tile. The wine cellar can easily preserve 1,500 bottles of wine in the environment it requires. And the rest of this level is an ideal answer to a recreation room, a pocket billiards table bar and home theater. Ron Bukert's crew fitted and installed all the pieces in the theater from scratch to create a consistency with the rest of their work throughout the house. What was once a damp and dark basement now glows with new life and old world charm. From the third floor to the lower level, these carpenters used outstanding craftsmanship to restore as well as enhance the mansion interior. Antiquated or archival materials have been preserved and stored in the home, their retirement often captured on video or film. Just as the designers, decorators and craftspeople searched for historical records on the project, so did the Rao family search for people who could provide references and resources. Mrs. Mary Eline Cunningham, one of the four children who grew up in the house, is relieved to see it restored to its intended grace and stature. I'm Mary Cunningham, and I grew up in this house. And it is wonderful to see it restored, because it was in shambles when Becky and Kalis took it over. The roof leaked, everything was destroyed. The windows were destroyed, everything. And they have built it up into this wonderful, wonderful, beautiful home. Uh, I'm trying to think of some of the people who were here. Irene Dunn, for one, and I think she's still living. And uh, then Mother entertained Jack Benny, Eddie Cantor, and a third one in that group. They were stationed at the Naval Base in Chicago. And like all those men would come up here for weekends. But I can remember those two particularly. And there was a third one which I can't recall. The grounds exemplify this respect with new plantings established by David Frank Landscaping, spilling over the bluff down to the shore of the lake. The most dramatic sign of the estate's renaissance, however, is captured in the addition of a reflecting pond in the center of the long expanse of lawn highlighting the facade when viewed from the gate. Bob and John Hosney have created magic with state-of-the-art electrical installations throughout the interior and exterior of the mansion. The lights wash away the age of the stone while illuminating paths which incorporate new balustrades, stanchions, and other stonework. Some of the stone here has come from Europe, some from as far away as Brazil, some shipped from Indiana for fabrication by Quarry Stone near Madison. The stone for the bluff from southern Wisconsin outnumbers all with figures in the hundreds of thousands of pounds. Hundreds of truckloads carrying tons of quartzite were unloaded on the precarious cliffs above Lake Michigan at the beginning of the project in fall of 1993. Over the winter, roofing contractors fashioned custom-crafted copper water diverting gutters for the tile roof they would install in spring of 1994. By the following fall, in 1994, extensive water damage had been discovered, repaired and replaced, while Wenniger Company crews continued to outfit the home with the latest environmental controls available, accessible through every area of the house and operated by computer commands. Antiquing began during the winter and by spring 1995, 
purchases began arriving from India and other parts of the world. The first events in the home this summer have included family reunions and concerts. The home is happily alive with joy and music again. It once more offers fellow residents in Whitefish Bay a view of beauty.